Welcome to another fascinating dive into the world of science, where nature laughs in the face of human disaster. Today, we're talking about something that sounds like it crawled out of a sci-fi horror film, radiation-eating fungi. Yes, you heard that right. While humans are busy growing extra limbs in post-apocalyptic fiction, these little fungal freeloaders are out here basking in the warm glow of Chernobyl's nuclear fallout like it's a luxury spa retreat. Let's rewind to 1986. Reactor 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant explodes, spewing radioactive debris into the air and creating an exclusion zone where life as we know it is supposed to be impossible. Fast forward five years, and scientists investigating the site find something growing inside the reactor. Not a mutated bear with three heads, unfortunately, but a thick, black coating of fungi happily colonizing the walls of what should have been an irradiated wasteland. Because you see, while humans get cancer from radiation, these fungi treat it like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Meet the three main offenders, Cladosporium spherospermum, Cryptococcus neoformans, and Wangiella dermatitides. Not exactly household names, but then again, they're not the kind of guests you'd invite to dinner. These fungi don't just tolerate radiation, they thrive on it. Instead of cowering in fear of gamma rays like the rest of us, they actively move towards the most irradiated spots, rubbing their metaphorical hands together with glee. The secret to their survival? Melanin. The same pigment that determines human skin color also gives these fungi a supernatural ability to absorb radiation and convert it into chemical energy. That's right, they're essentially tiny nuclear-powered photosynthesizers. Plants use sunlight. These fungi use nuclear fallout. Somewhere out there, Chernobyl's wildlife is looking at them with a mixture of fear and grudging respect. The exact process of how they do this is still a mystery, because of course it is. Scientists have observed that when exposed to radiation, the fungi grow faster, but they're still arguing over whether it's true energy conversion or just a very dark, fungal version of Stockholm Syndrome. Either way, it's impressive. Instead of withering away like the rest of the ecosystem, they saw an opportunity and took it. But here's where things get even more unsettling. These fungi didn't just evolve after Chernobyl. They were already out there, quietly surviving in uranium mines, in the upper atmosphere, and even on the International Space Station. That's right, NASA found similar species growing on the walls of the ISS, which is just a comforting thought for astronauts trying to sleep in orbit. Floating around in zero gravity, only to discover that nature has once again beaten us to the punch by adapting to space long before we did. The most mind-bending part of all this. Scientists are now seriously considering using these fungi as radiation shields for future space missions. You might laugh, but if it works, future Mars explorers could be growing a layer of black mold around their habitats to protect themselves from cosmic rays. And if that isn't the most dystopian solution to a problem, I don't know what is. But it doesn't stop at space travel. There's also talk of using these fungi for bioremediation, basically throwing them at radioactive waste sites and hoping they just eat the problem. Because when humanity breaks something, the best solution is apparently to find some form of mold that can unbreak it. If we ever dump enough nuclear waste into the ocean, I fully expect to see a new breed of glow-in-the-dark, radiation-guzzling sea sponges emerge, just chilling at the bottom like, thanks for the snack. Of course, this all raises some questions. If these fungi can absorb radiation, could we extract their melanin and use it to protect humans? Maybe, but let's be honest. Some pharmaceutical company would probably patent it, slap a ridiculous price tag on it, and leave the rest of us to fend for ourselves with SPF 1000. Also, let's not ignore the possibility that if these fungi keep evolving, they might one day look at us and say, you know what, we've been eating radiation for centuries. Maybe we should try something new. So to sum up, humanity unleashed one of the worst nuclear disasters in history, and in response, fungi shrugged, moved in, and started using radiation as a food source. If that doesn't make you feel like nature always has the last laugh, I don't know what will. If you ever feel like you're struggling in life, just remember, there's a species of mold that looked at Chernobyl and thought, perfect, I'll build my summer home here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, share it with someone who needs a healthy dose of existential dread,